Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, ka nui te uh, mihi ki a koutou a i te wānei, a e mihi mahana ki a koutou ngā, ngā kaimahi o te, o te moana. Mō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Yeah, that last name there, it's a strange name, it's, pr it's pronounced um, Ogilvy, Ogilvy. Alrighty, so um, yep, the, the um, topic of my um, the presentation today is um, revolutionising the scampi fishery. Um, I, it's, I wanted to um, talk to you about a, a, an um, MB program that um, I'm leading out of the Cawthorn Institute in Nelson. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a really exciting project and um, it's, been, it's a really enjoyable project to be involved with, so hopefully I'll be able to kind of get that message across uh, to you all today. Alrighty, so just to start, um, what is scampi? So um, the name that we kind of call it in the in science is Metanephrops uh, challengeri. It's a um, it's a lobster species, and it's uh, it it, um, it digs burrows in soft sediments in the in the, in the seabed, um, mainly 200 to 500 metres water depth. So quite a deep water species. It's a trawl fishery that um, started in the late 1980s. Was introduced to the Q QMS in 2004. Um, and the quota is underfished um, in some areas. But I guess more importantly, and I probably should have put this right at the top of the slide, is that, um, that this species is, is delicious, really good to eat. And, um, and apparently, I just learnt just earlier on in the session that you can make really good pizzas out of them. Um, in fact, my table down the back there managed to make a, a double scampi pizza, so there you go. The, the fishery at the moment is trawled, so it's a trawl fishery, and this is a, um, this is a uh, trawler, 24.5 um, metre long trawler, Seahawk 2. You see, it's a reasonably um, decent-sized vessel. You can see a little little person just at the in the, at the at the stern there. Um, and so this is a trawler that's owned by the uh, Waikawa Fishing Company. And so the Waikawa Fishing Company are a Fano-owned uh, company based out of Waikawa, obviously up near Picton there. Um, and there's two two of the uh, of the owners of the company here, Jeffrey Connor and Stephen Connor. And St uh, Stephen's down the back. So um, any really hard questions, you can just go straight to Stephen and ask him. Um, he's there with his wife Christine as well. So, Fano own company. Um, obviously, they own their trawler and they trawl for scampi. Um, and so, a, a couple of years back, we got into discussion. Actually, we had some some research um, projects that we did with the Waikato Fishing Company from out of Cawthron around um, looking at using pots for for ca for catching uh, finfish. And that kind of led into some discussions around the possibility for um, doing potting for for scampi. And so within the trawl, so the Waikato Fishing Company kind of have this long history of connection with the, with, the, with the moana, with the area, and so within the trawling process, they kind of had a lot of uh, some questions about how trawling for scampi could, could be improved. And so there's a number of areas where they thought there could be improvement, and uh, just broadly speaking, there's economic and environmental areas. And so for, the rest, for this presentation, I kind of want to focus on uh, potential areas for improvement um, in the economic space. So some, some um, areas here, you can see on the left hand side, you've got wear on, on fishing gear, there's potential improvement there, there's potential improvement around the, the product damage space, there's uh, improvement within the bycatch space, there's also a lot of um, improvement that could be made um, in terms of uh, reducing the fuel costs for the trawl fishery. And then also on the right hand side we've got, um, at the moment within the, within the fishery, the female scampi that have fertilised eggs that they're carrying under their tails are, are, are um, they go to market, so they're sold as is, so there's potential for improvement there. So two kind of major ways of, of making these improvements, and I guess this kind of gets into that disruptive technology space, which, is, which was mentioned earlier on, is um, potting. So instead of using a trawl, attempt um, to use pots for scampi, and then the second way is to actually um, using aquaculture, so, so on growing those fertilised eggs that the females carry on into new product. So these are the... Um, these two areas are, are make up um, a major, the two major parts of the research program that we're running. So they form the basis of the research program called Kaho, Kaho Te Rangatahi. And within that program, uh, it's an MB um, funded program, so Ministry of Business Innovation and Employment funded program, around about $1.3 million per annum over six years. And we're kind of coming into the end of the second year of this research program. So we're almost a third of the way through the program. We're way to go. So there's. Um, there's four organisations involved, obviously the Waikawa Fishing Company, um, Zebra Tech Limited, Adam Nelson, who I um, always tell everybody that they make, they, they do kind of the, the um, gadgety things like uh, making new, pro new products using 3D printing. Um, and then we've got University of Auckland and obviously it's being run out of the Cawthron Institute. And in addition we have an um, international te technical advisory group. Uh, we've got seven experts from five different countries around the world. 
Um, they have a whole range of expertise within the space that we're talking about. But just to, to kind of segue, I guess, into the next slide, that on the right-hand side in the front there is a woman called uh, Margarita Castro, who's uh, from Portugal, the University of the Algarve, and she's been doing a lot of research around, um, around converting the trawl uh, um, um, scampi fishery for northern hemisphere species of scampi um, around, um, around Portugal to, to potting. So she's been a really um, useful um, um, source of knowledge for, for what we're doing. So that leads me into talk about the first part of the research here, and that's attempting to, to pot for scampi. And so what, what we've done is we've actually done some trials, some sea trials with, um, with uh, creels from the northern hemisphere. So there's, there's small, small pots that are designed for the capture. So this is their species of scampi, Nephrops norvegicus. And you can see on the right-hand side there, there's a creel with, um, with three of them in it. And so we've done a, quite a substantial amount of work at sea with five different types of creels that have come from the northern hemisphere. So the three on the left-hand side, well, the one in the middle and the two on the left, they come from uh, Sweden, and then the two on the right-hand side are from Wales. And so to give you a rough idea, these are about kind of, they're pretty small, they're like 500 to 700 mil in, in length, these creels. And so the sea trial, there's a bunch of the creels there on the back of Seahawk 2. Um, we've trial, we've, we've, um, we did five, five of each of the, um, sorry, we did 125, uh, sorry, 105 of each of the types of creels with a total of 25,987 hours of fishing with them. And, and um, with that amount of work, everyone's laughing, they've already seen the next bit of the slide, we caught a scampi, so there. <laughs> and so... Um, well, it's kind of exciting in a way because you know we've caught a scampi in a, in a pot, which is what we set out to do. So it's kind of you know first step of a on the, along the pathway. Um, yeah, but yeah, admittedly, it's a very very low catch per unit um, <laughs> catch per unit effort. So there's our scampi right there. We should give it a name actually. Colin, Colin I've been told. I'll remember that. Alrighty, so that kind of led to. Um, when we started out in this research, we, we didn't know how well these scampi would take to being in the, in the laboratory environment. And it turns out, in actual fact, that they, they, they keep really well. They do really well in the, in, in the laboratory environment, well, in tanks. And, and, um, and so we've been able to actually follow up with this and do quite a bit of work on the, on the, on the fundamental behaviour of our scampi. And so we had a look at how the scampi are actually behaving around the creels. And so the photo on the top right hand side there is the entrance way to one of those creels. And it's essentially a cylindrical or, or a, a conical entrance way, a conical entrance way. And um, for whatever reason, our scampi just don't, they're really reluctant to make their way in there. They'd have to, if you have a look on the picture here on the right hand side, you can see they have their, compared to the North, Northern Hemisphere scampi, their claws are quite dainty. They're quite little, and they'd have to kind of poke them forward and then kind of make their way through the... And they just don't do it. It just doesn't seem to happen. <laughs> so for whatever reason, the Northern Hemisphere ones, you can see their claws are real booty things. They kind of push their way in and they make their way into the creel. So we think that there's this kind of... There's this fundamental difference in behaviour between the Northern Hemisphere and Scampi and our Scampi, which we kind of worked out in the lab, which has been a really quite a um, fundamental discovery. <coughs> So that kind of led to just in coming up with an entirely new design based around this kind of daintiness of our, of our species. And so we've come up with a, a new pot called a kiwi pot, and we've the components of the pot we've been able to test in the lab. So we've done over 2,000 lab trials with different components of the pot, and this is where the kind of 3D printing of different parts of the pot has been really useful. And so um, we've actually come up with an entirely new pot design, which I'm not unfortunately able to stick up picture of it because of the commercial sensitivity. Um, but we've been able to get really good capture rates in the laboratory with a, with a new pot design and we've taken it to the, um, we've taken it to sea. We've done a preliminary trial so we've taken 17 kiwi pots, in fact there were actually three different subtypes within the trial but we've taken them to sea and we've, four of them we had on a video frame. And so um, there's a video frame there and there's actually a pot there just neatly just underwater so you can't see it, but there's a pot underneath that frame so it sits on the seabed and we can get video footage of what's going on around the pot. Um, and we, um, we've only done 288 hours, but we caught a scampi, another one. <laughs> and so whilst it um, kind of doesn't sound that exciting, actually for us it's really exciting, but the, the catch per unit effort was, was obviously a thousand times better, so there you go. Um, it was a much larger individual, which was pretty exciting. Um, and that's 
should have a name for this one, actually. There's the individual there, pretty healthy looking female. Um, just as a side issue, um, Martin Cryer, is Martin here? No, Martin's um, had a go at doing potting with Scampi um, 20 or so years ago and he noted that hagfish are, will be a real issue around pots, hagfish coming and mucking and taking the, the bait and we actually did see hagfish in the video so it's something that we're going to have to be quite cognizant of. Alrighty, so on to the second part and that's the aquaculture. Um, this is the aquaculture park at the Glen, which is just to the east of uh, Cawthorn Institute in Nelson. And I had to mention Kevin Heesman because he's such a ninja in, this, in the whole aquaculture space. He's just amazing. He just knows so much. And he's really kind of running this part of the program. So the idea here is, is so there's females in berries. They, they carry the fertilised eggs underneath the tail. And the idea here is to use that, um, to take that through to aquaculture. So grow those eggs through, like I mentioned earlier. And so we've been able to collect broodstock from the trawl, and here's some scampi there in, 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 the, in, the, in our facility. They do really well. We've had individuals in there that are still there now that have been there for 15 months. So they kind of, some species that Kevin's worked with, he said they have a really strong will to die. But this species has a really strong will to live, which is really good for this kind of research. And the Waikato Fishing Company have really de um, have, have developed quite an expertise about getting really healthy product from the trawl, because this is trawled at this stage, obviously, to, to, the, to the facility, which has been really, really good. Okay, so th this is, um, these are eggs on a female. That These eggs are just early development, so the, the beautiful sky blue colour is the yolk. And then as the, egg, as the individuals develop inside the eggs, the blue, the yolk, runs out and you see the individuals starting to develop. Um, and so before this research program, Bob Weir, um, out of Wellington, uh, University of Victoria, was able to to hatch eggs and, take, and see the first larval stage, and he's published that in 1976. So that's where this picture comes from, a paper in 1976. We managed to do that. That's our very first one there. It didn't live for very long, but we managed to get it to hatch, so this is earlier in the program. So we've replicated that. But we've actually gone further and been able to, to grow them right through. We've discovered there's three larval stages, so we've got them right through three larval stages, and we've actually been able to on-grow them to post-larval as well. So that there is the very first post-larval scampi that we've had hatch from out of the um, from, from at, at the at the hatchery. Um, the food obviously is a key thing, and a couple of the people on the international tag have been vital with that knowledge about what to feed them. Um, so um, everything beyond the first larval stage is really new to science, and it's really new to for us. It's really quite exciting stuff. At the moment, right now at the facility, we've got 17 post-larval individuals, um, and um, the oldest is 92 days since it became post-larval um, as of today. And I just, to finish, I just wanted to show you a video of this of the scampi. Now, we, um, we don't know yet, talking about naming these things, we don't know yet um, whether it's a boy or a girl, and one of the technicians at the facilities decided to call it Caitlin, so there you go. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you this video, because even the behaviour and the way they act is all completely new. It's kind of exciting, certainly exciting for me as a biologist. So you can see the animal kind of waving its pleopods underneath its tail and, and bringing water current in underneath. And so this animal's feeding. Hopefully it's clear enough. You, you, you can see food particles being taken in underneath and, and, the, and the water currents will pull those food particles in. Animal will feed. So for us actually, obviously food is key and being able to, to actually film this and see these, these animals happily eating is, is really quite exciting. See that the water current being pushed in underneath? So this animal's about, yeah, just a bit over a centimetre in length. And as I said, oh, this was actually filmed about a month ago, so this is when it was about 70 days old or so, or a bit less. So the post larvals are essentially little adults. So we've, we've managed to, to breed them through to that little, to that small adult stage. And so now we're learning about what happens beyond there, and the idea really is to get them right through. So just to, just to finish off, <coughs> we've made really good progress with the potting and the aquaculture. We've also got another part of the research which is looking at lures, so lures to use with the pots. And so the next steps really are to, um, to do a fuller trial with the kiwi pot at sea, and then to look at increasing the post-larval production. Anoreira, kanui te mihi kia koutou, kia ora. <laughs>